Yes. Hey guys. What's yes. up? Yes, yes, yes. Eddie Brown, welcome in, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. How you doing, man? How's your day going? So far, so good. Woke up breathing. Yeah, that was a good sign. That's always a blessing, I'd say. I'd say. <laughs> uh, are Are you a fan of the NPR voice? Are you Are you a fan of that? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> Today, I woke up breathing. Amen. <laughs> uh, it, I, there's something about it that that uh, grinds my gears, but I, I, I enjoy NPR, so I, I look past it. I look past it. Raina, amen, amen. Raina, amen. You, um, uh, you, you, uh, you write some gospel music. Is is that right? Am I getting that right? You, you have a gospel or at least um, a faith based music. Is is am I hitting it or am I wrong? I do have uh, one uh, gospel song, yes. And uh, her, her love is like my gospel. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not necessarily uh, a Christian song. It's just sort no. of a, okay, okay. I get, no, because uh, it, it's just interesting that uh, uh, right now my wife Raina is is going through sort of a awakening to to Christianity. I, are 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 you a faith based gentleman? I, I'm not sure. Absolutely. I, yeah, it, do you go to church? I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer, <laughs> right? That. Uh, are, are you someone who goes to church often, or or how do you how do you practice? Well, I used to go to church a lot mm. before COVID. Oh and, yeah. And we kind of uh, got away from it, but I go to a Bible study every week. Oh. Um, uh, Tuesday mornings early, we have five or six guys to get together, and we just um, get together and talk about different things. But um, we have a a Bible study part that we do every week as well, which is pretty cool. It's, I'm a big history buff. Hmm. And, uh, reading the Bible is sort of like reading history. I agree. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, I enjoy it. So, yeah, you know, like the thing about the Bible and, and just, you know, just, for transparency, it's like I'm not the biggest religious guy. I grew up Catholic, but I've sort of gone away from the faith. Uh, and and my wife, interestingly enough, is sort of getting closer with it. So it, it it's it's cool. I I don't you know I don't dislike it. I'm not. I used to be very angry at religion because of my own experience, but now I've realized that, I, like you're saying, that there's a lot of history in the Bible. And I think the thing is that what when you see a lot of which there's this trend now that's going on where it's like let's dunk on Christianity, right? Like that's sort of this um this uh thing we're seeing in in the in the mainstream. Um whereas, you know, maybe 20, 30 years ago it, we seem to be a very um Christian country. Uh, nothing against any other religions or anything. Again, I'm not I, I don't hate anybody for what they believe in. Uh, that's just silly, but the, but, but what you, but you hit it right on the head. Like there's these ancient, ancient truths that sort of carry through in the Bible that I think that there is a, a lot to be learned from those truths, right? Like you don't have to take it verbatim, you know what I mean? But there is it, it, like, there's philosophy there. There's, there's, you know, a moral scaffolding there. There's all kinds of beautiful things and beautiful stories that lie within that, uh, book that that is very applicable to what you're doing now and i i don't know you know i i know why people are sort of turning on christianity um uh, considering that it's <laughs> i don't know if you watch the grammys but sam smith who is a who, who is a uh, who's a singer it was just like this satanic whole thing going on and and people are freaking out about it um, but you know, like, you know, the satanic imagery has been a part of music for a long, long time. Uh, but I, but I don't know, like the, do you agree with that? Do you think that there are sort of these ancient truths and, and, uh, that come along with the Bible that. I, go absolutely. Absolutely. Here, here's what I believe. I believe that religion is man-made hmm. and that it, it's made, it was made by man, but the gospel comes from above. Hmm. And, you know, your, um, your church comes in here. Yeah. Yeah. I agree so, with that. I agree yeah. with that fully. Um, my mom is a very, you know, ardent, uh, Catholic and she, uh, you know, she wants me to go to church and, and I, I tell her all the time, it's like, God is in my heart. You know what I mean? Like that's where God is for me. Um, 
again, I don't subscribe to all of what goes involved in it, but it, it you know, I, I do, I do, so I do have this um, belief that there is something that there is something more than just me. Now, is that is that some white dude in the clouds watching us, you know, all the time, or is that like the simulation, you know, like the idea of the simulation, <laughs> like if we're in a computer program. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Are, are we a cell on a gigantic organism? Uh, you know, just a, a, a you know a cell in, in an infinite amount of cells of a giant organism that's just out there in the in the universe. I don't know, it, but I think that's the beauty about it is that that no one really knows, and that's the idea of faith is that you have faith that there is something more to this than what there what we see. Um, what has, uh, has, has faith been a part of your life, your entire life or is some, yeah, something? And I wonder, I was getting ready to tell you the story. Please, I, please. I grew up Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being from the South, that's what I grew up. My parents were very religious. We went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday night, wow. um, three times a week. <laughs> um, so we, I went to church a lot. And then as I got older, I kind of gravitated away from that um, part of my life. And then when I met my current wife, she was Catholic. And so I actually converted to Catholicism. Oh, okay. um, back when, um, as when, right after we got married, I actually converted. So uh, it's been 30 some years now that I've been practicing the Catholic faith. So Wow. Okay. And the, so Southern Baptist, the Catholic Catholicism, Oh, you're Southern. Uh, well, when you when you talk about so, okay, so like my my only interaction with like Baptist churches is, is the the black side of it. I used to play in a Baptist church, and I absolutely love the music that's that comes out of that, like gospel music. Um, was there a, was there a, a musical side of your Southern Baptist experience? Was there like a band? And uh, and I know it's different from, you know, like if you go into the African-American side of it, but it, in some cases it's not. I mean, uh, I've definitely seen like Southern Baptists, they're playing full on like country music, which, you know, I'm a fan of country music myself. So like that, that's amazing too. But like, what was the music that sort of went with your experience growing up in the Southern Baptist church? Well, my dad was a deacon in the church. My oh, okay. mom sang in the choir, and oh, yeah. I played guitar in the in the church choir. And of course, we had a pianist, uh, a violinist, and myself, the guitarist. Um, of course, they had probably thirty people in the choir. Had the choir loft, you know, the whole thing. Big, yeah. everybody's up in the choir loft singing. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, and uh, music was a big part of of church in the Baptist church. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a big part. It was a lot of songs and a lot of singing. Um, and, uh, it was, it was also, um, probably one of the things that kept me in playing the guitar. I started when I was seven playing. And by the time I was probably nine or 10, I was already starting to play in the church some. So it, it motivated me to get better, you know, yeah. at, at that at times when I didn't really want to practice and I didn't want to keep going with it, I was kind of forced to do it because I knew I had to play every Sunday. Right. So it was, um, it, it kind of forced me into getting better. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's so, so did you start playing music because of the church or was it just something that you took up at seven that you wanted to do? I, I <laughs> honestly, the reason I, I started guitar was because I remember watching um, TV. It was a black and white TV and the Beatles. And I saw the Beatles playing and I saw all the girls screaming for them. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to play guitar. Heck yeah. I'm like, I want to be a star. Yeah. Know, like what else did back then. Was that Ed Sullivan that you saw him on? Or was I it? I think it probably was Ed Sullivan or mm -hmm. something like that where I saw him. But it, I remember it was a black and white TV right. mm -hmm. back then. So Wow, yeah. Beatlemania swept through and, and just took over. Um, that That's awesome. Yeah, It's so funny that that's so many people's um, <laughs> motivation to become music. It's like, I just want girls to scream at me. Yeah. <laughs> that was my motivation in the beginning. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, I mean, and why not? I mean, it, it, it it's it's natural. It's natural. I mean, I'm not sure if like you know, like uh, the the way that people like the way that those girls reacted to the Beatles. I mean, it was just such a. I mean, and then you think about how how young people and not just young girls, but like young people reacted to like Elvis, right? Like Elvis came out. And he started swinging his hips, and and that really like I mean it freaked out all the older folks, and all the young girls, all the young people were just like this is amazing. And then you get to Beatlemania where they're practically just standing in one spot, and the only thing that they did was like grow their hair long, right? And they're playing <laughs> old blues music, and it, it's funny that that's what uh, that's what started another generation of of, of young people just sort of losing their mind. There, there's stories of um there's stories of of uh you know people who had to like who were at these events you know where where the beatles came or where elvis played and they said the smell was 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 awful because these young- warp whistle welcome in thank you for that follow much appreciated thank you so much um thank you for that follow they, they would get so worked up that and, and by the way teenagers stink anyways right like teenagers are gross but they're also like 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 peeing themselves because they were so excited like like yeah. you, you ever have a dog that was so excited f- for people that just peed it's like yeah. that's <laughs> these young people these teens are just peeing themselves and uh you know losing their mind over rock and roll and uh, well, I mean, to to for for that kind of reaction, that that was such a you know different thing that they were all used to. I mean, it was so different. It was so new. They 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 and obviously the Beatles. Everyone thought they were cute or whatever. Which I didn't see it. I mean, maybe John and Paul were okay, but yeah, was funky dudes. Uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, they were. Yeah. Lo- yeah, I mean, there's this, but I don't know. Did, did you ever, uh, did you ever go to any concerts as a young teenager and and uh, experience any any wild things like that? Or uh, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't go to my first concert was probably I was in my early twenties hmm. and uh, it was Conway Twitty. Oh man, so that was my very first con- concert. Oh, that would have been awesome. And, and I actually got very good seats. Um, I was second row. Oh, wow. Um, but let me tell you, Conway Twitty was the real deal. He had women taking their panties off and throwing them on stage to him. It was the wildest thing I've ever seen. It was the first concert I've ever been to. And I'm like, is this the way every concert is? <laughs> women taking their panties off and throwing them on stage? I mean, and like he would always like have a sequenced, you know, vest or not vest, but like jackets on and stuff. Like he always had like that. He was always looking very debonair and, and, and uh, you know, and, and wild with his sequence on it. I can imagine. I mean, that that had to have been a great show. That had to be a great show. It was. And my second concert was Boston. Okay. <laughs> the dichotomy <laughs> there is amazing. <laughs> Two ends of the spectrum, yeah. right? <laughs> Heck yeah, though. That's awesome. And, and so that the where where did you grow up? Uh Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, out in the country, but not uh-huh. we were about 25, 30 minutes east of Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, okay. So you were always in proximity of a place that would have music and all that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. That that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. So you you started your musical journey because <laughs> you <laughs> want to get girls and and you want to be a rock star. But then the church, and then and then so in your twenties, were you were you actively playing music? Were you out gigging? Like when did you start really getting into um, you know, like creating music because you obviously have recorded music and, and, and you've done all that stuff. So I'm yeah, sure. I, I started um, actually playing in a band probably around 12 or 13. Oh, cool. Um, and then um, we started playing. Um, f- well, we played out for very small things like birthday parties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I can remember we got our first really big gig um for a um high school what do you call them the um the the big dance they have every year at high schools junior senior prom junior senior prom 
and we got our first big gig for that. The name of our band was Yield. Yield. Let's, Yield. <laughs> let's go. Let's our go. drummer, our drummer on the front of his, he stole a yield sign and bolted a yield <laughs> sign to the front of his bass drum. <laughs> so that was the name of our band. But uh, yeah, we we did a lot, and then I joined a band later called uh, Sutter's Gold Street Band. Okay, and they were a country rock band. Okay, we, we played pretty much all over the South um, venues, not you know, nightclubs and things like that. But uh, then I got out of that, um, and I, I became a I actually became a police officer. Oh wow! And, okay, yeah, so I got out. I got out of the Marine Corps. Um, did a little bit of crazy stuff. Got into um, got into the police force. And, uh, so that was, that was actually my first career was being a police officer. What, what kind of crazy stuff? Oh, just play, you know, playing in bands and things mm-hmm. like that. And just, you know, traveling all over and, um, not, not, uh, not really knowing what I was going to do for a little while and mm-hmm. then deciding, Hey, this is, you know, I need to do something different than this, or I'm going to become, a, a, you know, a derelict <laughs> <laughs> a derelict oh man so you became a cop that's interesting uh how old were you when you decided to, uh, to go into the forest let's say i was 23 i think 22 wow. or 23 wow and uh became a police officer and actually um in 1980 i think it was 85 or 86 the um i was in a car wreck during a car ch- i was in a car chase Whoa. and uh was in, i was in a car wreck got thrown out of the car and uh and broke my neck and so i got i was retired from the police department uh, i've actually got a song about it um how the how that happened um it's called <sighs> fallen dreams um i haven't ever recorded it but it's i do have a song it's called fallen dreams but uh yeah that happened and uh then um, and the, the thing that the, the song leads up to because of that and because of things that happened because of me being in that wreck is how I met my wife. Oh. Yeah. So it's a pretty, pretty uh, interesting story how or, or turn of events when you think about how life kind of ricochets and you think you think you have all these dreams lined up and then something messes those dreams up and you have to get a whole new set of things lined up for the rest of your life. Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of, you know, kind of my story as far as, you know, my, you know, I wanted to be a police officer all my, for the rest of my life. I wanted to be a career cop, you know, because I, I enjoyed that. I enjoy helping people and I enjoyed the, the work. But, um, you know, as as that changed, um, so did my life. And. Then I got into real estate, and uh, so I'm still doing that, thirty some years later. <laughs> so what? So the 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 car chase. What? What? So what? How did that start? Like, what, did you pull the guy over, and he didn't pull over, or did he take off on you? And well, what were they doing? Like, what were they suspected of doing? So well? this person had stole a car, oh. and uh, was he was in a stolen car, and he had driven was driving through erratically through downtown Raleigh and had side swiped some cars. So a, a police officer got behind him. Now this kid ended up being 14 years old. <laughs> yeah. He was from a town about a hundred and some miles away from the west, uh, west of us. He had stole his car. He'd come to the big city and didn't know what to do. And so the police got behind him at the time. They didn't know he was 14 years old. They had no idea what he was doing, but so he driving erratically. They're trying to get him stopped. And so my supervisor told me, he said, let's do a running roadblock on this guy, which means you got the bad guy coming, you know, this way. And then you got two police cars that pull in in front of him and slow him down. Okay. Well, I was in the car on the right. And when I pulled in, he did not slow down. Oh. And he hit me oh. right in the back and my car flipped over. Oh my and actually, God. and this was before you were required to wear seatbelts. Oh, shit. And and I didn't have a seatbelt on. It threw me out of the car, broke my neck. Um, I got, you know, road rash everywhere. But wow. um, so that, you know, that took me out of my police career. Yeah. That point. And so, how old were you then? Uh, I was probably 
late twenties. Okay, so you were so you were you were on the force for a few years before that happened. Yeah, I had to, I had uh, I think eleven years total by the oh, wow. time I actually retired from um, the police department when they retired me. Um, I had and then I added my I, I, luckily I was able to add my military time into it, hmm. um, which gave me like fifteen years. Oh, okay. um, so so that made it nice, you know. Okay. I still got still got a retirement out of it. So. Hell yeah. So were you an MP too in the military? I was not. That's what I wanted to be. Ah. Um, I wanted to be an MP, mm-hmm. but then they had other things that they wanted me to do. And uh, so I actually been, I went to MP school and then during MP school, they pulled me out and I became an intelligence officer for, for uh, Marine Corps. Oh. Marine Corps intelligence, which is an oxymoron. <laughs> Marine Corps intelligence. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of intelligence in the Marine Corps. Well, I mean, you know, uh, a big salute to our to our, uh, our our folks fighting for for our freedoms and stuff. But uh, I mean, the the you know, like I, when I think of the Marines, I think of you know one of the top tier of of you know. From what I gathered, it, it, the Marines were are are like one of the you know first line defense and uh you know it's it's where the the tough guys go you know it's like and then it's, uh, the way I, I the way that it seems to me it's just like air force navy army and then marines and then like you know seals and rangers and all that stuff like green berets and these special forces and stuff that's how it was explained to me by by my army friend <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know if that's how it works um uh, but it's interesting that you say there's not a lot of intelligence. Oh, like, what kind of stuff would you do in the intelligence for Marines? That, I, I mean, if you can talk about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we um, did mostly um, intelligence work where we would go to, and the, the the group that I was did was with, we mostly did, um, you know, whenever the Russians came over and there was a whole group of them that came over something, we followed them around oh. and, the, and and we would spy on the embassies, not, not really spy. Hmm. We would just watch what they did and record it. Hmm. And, uh, you know, back then we had the big old parabolic microphones, oh, the yeah. big old things where you could listen to people from, you know, 200 yards away. Yeah. Um, and, and we took photos and things like that. So basically it was just intelligence gathering, mm-hmm. you know, what it was. So. Did you like that? Was that exciting for you, or was it that- was a lot of fun? Yeah, it was. It, it was. You know, it was a lot of boredom, intermittent, with a lot of really fun things that went on in between. Yeah, but it was a lot of boredom because you're basically doing a stakeout. It's basically right. what you're doing. You know, so it's it's um, pretty boring at times. <laughs> but um, we had a good group of people that kept it. We kept it interesting. Yeah, yeah. Was there any? Uh, was there any? Um- did you have any close calls with that, or did you did you guys end up taking down anybody, or what, was there any? Well, unfortunately, um, back then, and I think it's still true today, is that you know if you have a foreign national that commits a crime, you can't hmm. you you can't arrest them. That's right. uh, it has to be like an act of Congress to arrest these guys. Yeah, uh, we saw some really bad things happen. Wow! And a couple of times we did, uh, without permission, intervene to keep things from getting worse. Um, So, um, but we, we weren't supposed to, you know, we weren't, you know, our orders were just to observe, Mm -hmm. but uh, there were times when I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, this, we're not going to let this happen. You know, we would intervene and take, you know, take, take the situation down a couple of notches. Yeah. um, So there wouldn't be anybody hurt, you know, so. Like, Like what, like what did you have to intervene on? Well, like they would be beating up. Uh, well, the one time that was the worst is they were beating up this woman, oh. and she was an American woman, and so that we intervened and got her out of the situation. Wow. Um, and they still didn't have a clue who we were. You know, they didn't have a clue who we were. We we just swept in and took her away, and yeah, you know, you know that, that just happened so quickly they didn't have a clue. Did you know, what what we were doing, but. She was happy. Well, <laughs> yeah, so my God. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. I mean, that, that, I, that, that sucks. Uh, that, and the fact that you, um, you know, if you guys wouldn't intervene, that really your mission is really just to sit there and watch this happen. Correct. And like, and so you sort of have to just let these horrors happen in front of you while you just collect information. And 
Uh, man, that that seems uh that seems that seems tough, man. That seems tough, especially when you know you can go and save somebody or or you know do that. And you guys took it upon yourselves. Did you guys end up getting any, in any trouble for doing that? Well, nobody found out about it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't go into the report. <laughs> and there was no report on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one got left out. That fair enough. And, and the- and all the cameras were cut off and all, you know, everything mm. like cut down. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, there, there's like duty and then there's just being a human being, right? Like just be yeah. um, somebody who has a conscience. I, mean, I feel that, man. You got to step in until it's, now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny, though. The, the van that we um, were, were in, that we used was, it was this old brown Ford van with, you know, box van type thing Mm. and we had taken um, on the side of it and had gotten this paint and we wrote eddie's electric company on the side of it (laughs) and that's that's what was on the side of the end that we did a lot of our surveillance out of oh eddie's electric company Eddie's Electric Company and Dog Forty One, welcome in. Thank you for that raid, Eddie. Uh, Eddie uh, welcome d- Raiders. Welcome Raiders. Robbie, what is up? We are gonna go ahead and do our raid song. Eddie, give me a moment to uh, be obscene for a minute. <laughs> welcome Raiders. My name is Mike or W S E G T V. Robbie, thank you for. I, I, I'm guessing Robbie was the one who brought you guys over here, but thank you guys yeah. for picking us. We're talking to Eddie Brown Music. We are a music podcast and we cover music news. But now we have something special for you folks. If I can only find it, because of course I never have anything where I ha- need it. Oh, here it is. Pfft. All right, guys. This is for you. Thanks for the raid, Ant Dog. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if we can ever get there. Fresh. May I have a guess for your breath? Don't you acquiesce? I want a real yes. If you don't want to bang, let's stay up just to hang. I want you into this so I can give you sexy bliss. And if you change your mind, we can still have a really good time. All I want to do is touch your boobs. Welcome, Raiders! I want to touch all your boobs. If it's okay with you, we only with consent will I touch your boobs. How was your stream, Aunt Dog? I hope your stream was well. Let's go, round two. Touch I will take a cold shower, then let's talk about girl power. I just want to make you happy with those boobs. You may slap me. Let's not rush this love connection. This is deeper than my erection. If you reject my male gaze, I'll look away and feel shame. All I want to do is Raiders, let's go. Thank you, thank you for being here. All I wanna do is touch Look at you. Doing. This is something else. If You're right about that. Thank you for that follow. Let's go. Take it to the bridge. If yes means yes, and no means no, then baby. Let me finger blast your soul! All I wanna do is touch your boobs. If that's right. You wanna touch your boobs, Raiders? Is what I do. Only if you're okay with my touch. Touch your boobs. All I wanna do is touch your boobs. Only if you're alright with it. That's, that's right all. With you. As long as you're cool with it. Is what I do. Before I touch, touch your feet. May I have a yes to grab his breath? I don't know how this became our raid song. <laughs> I just started doing it. It used to be tacos. But why not? 
make it all original. That is my latest single called Boobs, which is out now. Oh, Lord. All right. Uh, uh, today, again, today's guest is Eddie Brown Music. Eddie, your face was just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> it's cool. I, I'm odd for both Ant and WSCG, and they both have significant others who are music streamers on here that I love. Oh, who's the significant other of Ant Dog? Who, whom? Of whom is it? Oh, and also I'm going to turn off these alerts real quick. Uh, anyways, thank you guys again. Uh, again, we are a music podcast. And <laughs> even though that was weird, is that another Eddie Brown original? Sure, let's go with it. Eddie Brown, uh, you're, you're welcome to cover that. And also, Eddie, thank you for wearing the WSEG hat, which Eddie did that uh, war, war's hat. Brian, give me $18 to buy Sekiro. What, what is that? Kalaska. Is that, your, is that your significant other? An angel sent from heaven. Oh, amazing. Well, let's get a shout out for Kalaska. Somebody. I, I'm terrible at typing. Zaf Meister, welcome in. Thank you for being here. Uh, we were just talking about Eddie and his exploits as a uh, as a marine intelligence. What was the what was the highest rank that you got? Oh, you say uh, she she sings originals. Hold on, hold on. Let me go check out. Let me go follow both of you guys so I can come back. And, uh, and and hang out. I'm going to follow. Make sure you guys are following as well. Look at that. Old Band-Aid. <laughs> That's, is that a song? Let me see what it sounds like. Yeah, we have these Bean Boozled. Oh, my God. Boozled. Keep that shit better. away from me. I'll have to eat one. And there's tons of different. Have you ever done Bean Boozled, uh, Eddie? For like any... <laughs> I have not. It's it's horrifying. It, it, it's just horrifying. Uh, it, it's like um, there there. So it's like a game, and and you spin a thing, and and streamers will use it as a yeah. No, don't do the beans, Bob. Don't do the beans. <laughs> the, sometimes streamers will use them as like incentives for like subathons or something, and um, they have different flavors. So you can either get like it'll be either like cool uh cool breeze flavor like a like a sweet flavor or it will be like dirty dish water or okay. it will be like uh ice cream flavor or sour milk or <laughs> it, there's like booger it's like the harry potter beans right uh, it, kind of <laughs> but but way more gross <laughs> <laughs> and less transphobic um no i'm just joking but the the uh the but it's it, it's horrifying it's horrifying you you get um you 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 i almost threw up it, it like the booger flavor is like just the wor worst thing ever who would subject a streamer like that to possibly nasty taste and be a lot of people a lot of chat 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 is is, is a, a malicious vicious machine sometimes you can't you can't stop them won't stop them uh, but I do want to hear um, Kel Kalaska sing something. So I'm wondering. Things on here. There's liver and onions. Oh, here you go. There's old band aid. I don't there's think you can hear. There's pomegranate. There's rotten egg. This smells worse than anything. Assuming you would probably. You probably can't hear that, Eddie. Sorry. Okay, here we go. She's eating. They smell so bad, guys. You don't even know she... how bad they smell. Yeah, they have barf. It's it horrible. It was not like this when I marshmallow. I can't be certain. Oh God. Okay. Sorry, Cal I can't watch that. It's 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 horrifying. That's horrifying. Uh. Anyways, everybody, go follow. Uh, did I follow? <coughs> I did follow. Okay. And then where is Ant Dog? Let me follow Ant Dog as well. Uh. Ant Dog. Where's Ant Dog? There's Ant Dog. And that's a follow. There we go. Following both. Because we're doing it like that. Anyways, let's get back to Eddie here. Since uh, I was very enthralled with your stories of, of of being a Marine. Oh, no worries, Ant Dog. No worries at all. Um, oh, and that's the... There's her Spotify thing. Okay. Thank you, Robbie. I don't have Spotify. I don't have Spotify um, awesome anymore. Hey, 
Wow. She has like a million plays. Good for her. That's awesome. So you can hear it too, Eddie. Dope. Hold on, one more. Go ahead and follow him. You do. Uh oh. It sounds. It sounds ballady. I'm ready for some ballads. Let's go. She may contain the earth and run away, but hold it down with soggy clothes and breeze bars. Citrus in your fever, scream me again. Never kiss it. So you ever give up on stars? Do you know where the wild things go? They go along to take your honey. But down the we build a breath of personality. My love, my love, my love, my love, my soul and muscle. Toe to toe, the fear is gripping me, but here I go. My heart sings as I. I dig it, man. I really oh, dig it. Awesome. She has a great voice. Yeah, absolutely. She has a really cool um, approach to singing. I like how she sort of um, rides yeah. the rhythm, rides the beat and stuff. She was on Primordial Sounds Punk Rock Raid Train with us. Oh, okay. Right now. Mighty, mighty. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thank you for being here. We got a question from the chat uh, from Bob Blaho Music. Are there any exciting real estate stories you would like to share with us, Eddie? Yeah, and I, I was telling Eddie before we started that I, I did want to talk real estate because uh, me and my wife are are looking to uh, to buy uh, property here in the next you know in the next year or so, um, which you know it, it sounds terrible, but I'm hoping that the housing market kind of tanks. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie, uh, but you know because like I remember back in 2008 when all that stuff went down um, and, and like around here in Ohio, they were giving houses away. It was like ridiculous. And, and you could get a house for like 10 grand and, and it was like pretty decent. I mean, it needed work, but you could get some pretty decent. And you could still do that these days, but it's in the hood and I'm not afraid. I'm not a fan of the hood, but uh, uh, exciting real estate stories. Bob Blaho wants to know we got anything in the chamber eddie yeah the, after 30 some years of being it i have quite a few exciting stories that i could tell let's go some of them, some of them aren't very clean but um that that's okay you just saw what we just did right you just saw uh, about uh, boobs oh yeah the boobs touch my boobs, <laughs> touch yeah, my boobs. We, <laughs> we uh we've had all sorts of stuff where um Actually, this was not me. This was one of my agents that this happened. Kalaska, thank you for the follow. I'm sorry, Eddie. We're, we, but we're they, uh, they went into this vacant house. The house was vacant, and it was a very nice house. Back this was 20 years ago, and the house was like eight or nine hundred thousand dollars. So it was a really nice house, but it was vacant. And so when you call in to show properties, they say the house is vacant. Here's the lockbox key mm -hmm. code to get in. And so they went in. And my agent calls me and he says, um, I'm at this house and it says it's vacant, but I keep hearing voices. And I said, well, just call out. He said, well, they're not really voices. He says, it's like moans. And I'm like, it's moans. I said, what are you, what the heck are you talking about? And so he said, well, I'm going to kind of follow these sounds. He goes back and, the son of the owner who didn't live there anymore was in there with some girl, I guess it was his girlfriend. And so he, you know, walks in on him and he said, they never saw him. He turns around, walks out very quietly, <laughs> takes his clients out and they shut the door and then they leave. 
Um, like a gentleman. That, yeah, that was uh, one of them. Another one that's um, that that always sticks in my head is um, another one of my agents um, went to a house one time, and this is really sad. But the the owner of the house had committed suicide, huh. and they found him in the house. He had shot himself. And they found him in, actually in the house, and it was like, oh, you know, they walk in the house, and this guy's sitting, laying on the floor, you know, he <sighs> shot himself. And so that was just a horrible one that, yeah. that had happened. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's all sorts of good ones, too, you know, where you, you go in and you, you, you know, well, I'll tell you another good one. Yeah, <clears throat> let's go. So I, I was going in to list this house. And when you go in as a listing agent, you go through and you kind of look at things that need to be changed to yeah. make it more presentable. And so we're walking through the house and I'm saying, okay, we probably need to move this furniture and we need to do this and clean this closet out. And so we walk into the master bedroom and on the wall above the master bed is a painting of a naked woman. And the naked woman was the woman standing next to me. <laughs> She had a butt naked picture painting of herself on the wall in her bedroom. I like and her. I said, and her husband is just like, I'm like, well, that's really got to go. I said, you can't have that in here. And he's like, well, why is such a good picture of her? And I'm like, no, you don't understand. You can't have a <laughs> naked picture of your wife over your bed when your house is left. Um, was she attractive? Yes, quite attractive. Well, there yeah. you go. Then the picture stays. The picture <laughs> stays. Does the Maybe pic it can be sold with the house. Right? Yeah, that's what Bob just it said. It goes with the house. Uh, you, Bob just brought up a, a good point. Was was the was the suicide house hard to sell after that? Were, were you guys able to get rid of it? Or and and is that one of those things where you have to have to tell people? It's close. It close. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Close. I'm a closer. <laughs> no, no. I said you have to disclose it. Oh, disclose it. it. Disclose it. Yeah, you have to be disclose right. It. So, but it did sell. It okay. did sell. Eventually. All right. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't be. I don't think it would bother me. But I, I would want the painted picture to stay of the lady. That would be part of the. It's like there's no deal. Unless uh, yeah, I'm, I'm offering you 325 for the house, but the picture has to stay. <laughs> the picture has to stay. <laughs> Why do you have to disclose? I'm curious. Robbie wants to know. In, in your haunted house, or well, he was just he was just wondering why you have to disclose if someone has has like died or or committed suicide in a house. Well, the reason we disclose it's not so much that you have to by law. Hmm. But it's the right thing to do because I don't want to sell a house to somebody that we move in and then the next door neighbor comes over and says, oh, you knew the guy killed himself in the house, didn't you? I mean, I mean, my reputation is worth more than that, you know, as, as a realtor. So mm. I want to disclose that ah. uh, saying that, hey, OK, someone committed suicide in a house because they're going to find out anyway. Right. You know, so they're going to find out later. And I would I would not want them to be mad at me saying, hey, you should have told me that. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. I trusted you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, well, that makes sense, though. And, and Kalaska, thank you for that follow. I, I know I thank you, but your music is beautiful from what I heard, the little bit of it, if you're here, if you're still here. Uh, th th have you ever had to sell, like, a murder house? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's a, there was a house, uh, there was a few houses down from my mom's where, it, and it's one of those big, like, McMansion things. And... Um, the 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 dude hung himself in in the in in the foyer and um they had a hard time selling that property and, and i'm in ohio and um ohio there's a lot of there's a lot of uh a lot of you know there's a lot of faith here and there's a lot of people who get freaked out about that kind of stuff so it's like uh I, I don't know. It's straight. I mean, for me, I would just be like, well, is there, are you going to take money off the top? Like, what's up? Are you, <laughs> let's make a deal. Um, but, but it is strange. Uh, yeah, you wake up in the middle of the night and you see the light fish are going. <laughs> <laughs> have you had ever had any experiences with haunted houses? I actually have. Oh, my, um, let's go. My wife's parents' uh, house um, down at the beach. 
Um, and this is really a really sad story. Oh, well, um, we're about here. five houses down from them, they live right on the intercoastal waterway, so it's right on the water. Okay. And about five houses down from them, um, this little girl fell off of their dock and drowned. Uh-huh. Well, they found her body very close to my in-law's dock. Oh. And so, um, wasn't very long after that we started hearing weird things. Um, we had small children at the time. And when we would go visit them, we would bri- take the little gate, uh, what do you call it, little crib things that, um, that folded up. Oh yeah. yeah. And, you know, your kids would sleep in those things. Hmm. And one night my wife and I heard a baby crying and we thought it was our babies crying. And we woke up and our kids were sound asleep. Ooh. I mean, absolutely sound asleep. And this happened numerous times. And then one night I woke up and in in their um, house, the door stops that stopped the door were springs. They had these little springs that came out of the wall with a little rubber thing. Yeah, yeah. And so I woke up and, and this is going to sound weird as here, but I swear to God, this is the truth. On my mother's grave, this is the truth. I heard something going, boing, hee, <laughs> boing, hee, <laughs> I am not lying. It, it, it and I it was coming right from where that little Mm-mm. thing was, Mm-mm. and so we all believed that it was that little girl's ghost that came in and and, and haunted their house basically. Uh-uh. No, uh, sir. I'm not the only one that that saw and heard things. If Brown Eyed Girl is still on here, she heard it and she <laughs> experienced it as well. She knows. <laughs> she knows. So, um, so multiple people in our family heard all that. So wow. it was pretty weird. Wow. Now, what? And I'm sorry, maybe I missed this part. This was this was the house that you were selling, or this was the house you were living in. Like, no, this was my parents' in laws house. Your your in laws house. Yeah, my wife's okay. parents' house. And when you were staying over there, you yes. were you heard this. Oh my god. Yes. It was No, I would never go I would never see my in laws again. I'd just be like, <laughs> sorry, in laws. You, you you can come well, to were, my house. It always seemed to happen in this one room um that we always stayed in. Uh and there were a couple of Liz's sisters that would not stay in that room. Wow. They they would not sleep in that room. Fair enough. So. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever go back there again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I. I just like. Oh my god, that that kind of stuff, man. Uh, how? I, I mean, like, how were you? How did you internalize that? I mean, like, did you feel like? You, I mean, you obviously probably went back there, but like, were. I mean, were you afraid? Were were you just like, ah, eh, that's just that's life? Well, if it, if it had been something scary, probably yeah. But mm-hmm. I mean, it was just—I think it was just this little girl that was, you know, I don't think she meant any harm to anybody, yeah. uh, honestly. You know, and I always tell it's, you know people say I don't believe in ghosts. Well, you know, do you believe in angels? Mm-hmm. Do you believe in God? Do you, if, you know, if you believe in angels, you have to believe in ghosts. Yeah, you know, I would say. Spirit. Yeah, I would say so. If you if you have if you believe there's a higher power, then then yeah, and you believe there's angels floating around and flying around, and and there there's a, some red guy underneath us who's poking people yeah. with a with a, with a pitchfork. pitchfork. Then then a trident. Yeah, it, the, the, you're 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 in. You're you're in. <laughs> well, no, Experience a bunch of ghosts on my wedding night. How dare you, Robbie? <laughs> the, the, Wow, where was your wedding, Robbie? Try living on a ley line. What's a ley line? Do you know what a ley line is, Eddie? I do not. Explain, Naders. I don't know what a ley line is, and how dare you say something I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> the God, his wife found him and had to cut him down? Oh, God, that's horror. That's horrifying. <laughs> Those poor horses. Uh, it was haunted hotel in San Antonio. Oh my God, San Antonio is wild. Anyways, like that's that's the whole in St. Anthony. Okay, the so Saint Anthony. yeah, uh, San Antonio. Wait a second. So San Antonio, Texas, or like San Antonio, like Mexico. Like I, I'm sure there's plenty of St. Anthony's around, and I, I knew what that meant. 
Robert, you didn't have to translate it for us. Uh, but San Antonio, Texas is dope. I, I, okay, yeah, Texas. Texas is crazy. San Antonio is amazing. I mean, what, what's that? The Alamo. Have, have you ever been to San Antonio? Yeah. Ah, I I love it. it. The only thing that's weird about San Antonio to me is that they put Velveeta cheese on their enchiladas. And I'm just like, <laughs> why do you do that to enchiladas, bro? Like, I mean, I have Velveeta on my wrist, but like on my arm, my forearm, but I ain't... I ain't trying to have it on my enchiladas. Um, what did you say? My thought was even after he killed himself, she was still cutting him down. So sad. Oh, well, yeah, it happens. Uh, ley lines are straight alignments drawn between various historic structures and prominent landmarks. The idea was developed in the early 20th century Europe with ley lines believers arguing that these alignments were recognized by ancient societies that deliberately erected structures along them. Oh, and that's where you live. <laughs> Isn't that nice, Naders? I like that. It was blocks from the Alamo and the Riverwalk. Riverwalk, Riverwalk is beautiful. Love the Riverwalk. It uh, is. Uh, it's okay for your arm, but not to eat. Yeah, no, well, my Velveeta, I don't eat Velveeta. I just have it there because it's for my dad. But <sighs> Velveeta. Do you like Velveeta, Eddie? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's cheese product right like it's it's like they don't have to refrigerate it it's like anything that they don't have to refrigerate and they call it cheese and has dairy in it it just seems a little weird to me just just on mac and cheese that's it yeah or or what's the chili dip you ever had the chili yeah. the chili dip's not yeah. bad like cheese with yeah like cheese whiz too yeah the, all all that's basically the same crap I went to a college in Philly where, yeah, they, they love it on their Philly cheesesteaks, don't they? The weirdos. Get out of here with that Philly stuff. My wife makes this awesome dip with sausage and Velveeta cheese and okay. stuff. It's it's awesome. <laughs> it's the awesome sauce. I love it. <laughs> so, so okay. So, do you, do you see a housing crash happening in your well, expert opinion? In my expert opinion, no. Mm. Um, I, I, and I listen to a lot of people a whole lot smarter than me, um, mm. because, because I'm not that smart. If I had a, if, you know, if I, if I had a, a crystal ball, you know, I could be a millionaire, but, um, I, I try to listen to people who know, um, the financial side of things mm. and how things are going. So back in 2007, when we had the major, major crash, um, there was a whole lot of other. Um, things that cause that mm -hmm. number one was the way that they loaned money back then is a whole lot different than the way they loan money now. Yeah. So they were giving people loans that did not deserve loans back then right. um, that probably knew they would never be able to repay them or mm -hmm. they, they got these LIBOR loans, which, which they got them at like one and a half percent. And then they jumped up to five and a half percent and their payments quadrupled right. and they could no longer afford the houses. So a lot of houses went into foreclosure because of that. Now we're looking at, you know, s since the, the Frank Dodd law came through in the late 2009, 2010, 11 area era. And Frank Dodd was um, two um, congressmen that got together and presented this law where it was more about fair lending mm. um, and also not, um, having a lot of really strict rules around lending. And basically the pendulum swung from really, really easy to get a loan to really, really hard to get yeah. a loan for about three or four years. And then it came back down and it's, it came back down more to the, to the middle now. And that's kind of where it stayed. Well, the big thing is, is that right now, the loans that are out there, most of the people are able to make those payments on their house. Even if the price of their house may dip a little bit, their houses are still affordable. They've got fixed rates at two and three quarters or three or three and a half or whatever. So they've got a really good um, payment that they're living in. And I always tell people, you know, you, you don't really live in the price of a house. You live in your monthly payment. That's yeah. what you live in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, marry the house, if you will, but date your mortgage rate. Because if it goes down, you can always refi and get a lower rate. Mm -hmm. So 
right now, because interest rates are back up, what we're seeing is there's still very low inventory. There's still not enough homes out there to go around for people who want to buy homes. But the interest rates have kicked up above 6%, five wow. and three quarters, 6%, six and a half percent. So, you know, uh, somebody that was looking for a house a year ago, eight months ago, they could have got a house at two and three quarters, 3%. Well, now they're paying double interest rates. So where they may have been looking at a $600,000 house, now they're having to look at $300,000 houses. Mm. And in our area, there's just not a lot of $300,000 houses around. So, you know, I don't think there's going to be a bust. I think that we're probably going to have a very flat period for the next year to year and a half where we're not going to see a whole lot of movement either way. Um, but then I think once everything kind of evens out and we find out what's going on politically and all the crap that goes on in that, uh, then we'll see from there, we will start to see some improvement. And that's what most of the the gurus are saying in our industry, saying that we're going to be flat for a year to 18 months, and then we'll start to see another um, slow incline of of housing prices. And, you know, it, it won't be like it was. Um you know, we were seeing in our area, we were seeing 23 to 25% a year, hmm. you know, increases in house prices. Wow. Um, so it's just ridiculous. It's not sustainable to do that. Right. It's just not, you can't sustain that type of, of, of increase in a house price. And, you know, you're pricing 25 to 30% of your market out of being able to afford a house, especially first time home buyers. You know, when the price you know, the price of a house goes up twenty five percent as it did, and interest rates go up double, you know we've priced a ton of people out of the market. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, it, there's well, kind of going into what what's your take on like these big companies that are sort of buying out houses and just sitting on them and and not allowing sort of cutting out people. Because it, it almost feels like it's on purpose um, when you have these companies. And, and you know, I, I'm not saying like there's some grand conspiracy or anything, but I'm saying um, when you have these bigger companies, I, uh, is BlackRock one of them? Or I can't remember what the names are. But, they're, you know, they you have these huge companies that are just buying up swaths of houses and they don't care if they sell them. They don't care if it goes or comes or goes or not because they, they have enough money to sort of just to, to, to keep them on the market or, or rent them out. Um, what's your, open, what's your open door and Zillow, uh, are two that, um, started buying houses. That's right. Um, very, you know, very strong. They were buying a lot of houses. They mm -hmm. were giving people top dollar for houses. Um, and now we're seeing, um, a lot of these houses that they bought, they can't sell. Um, because they're overpriced, number one, um, because they bought them at a high end. So now they're having to drop the prices and they're actually selling houses for far less than what they paid for them. Oh, good. Um, just to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, Zillow actually got into it and they got out. They stopped buying houses because they were like, I, we can't make money at this. There's mm -hmm. just, and if you got house prices going up 25% a year, then you can do okay with that. But when things level out, you can't give somebody top dollar to get them to sell you a house, you know, for the convenience factor of just being able to walk away and not having to put your house on the market and do open houses and all that stuff. But, you know, once again, these companies, by the time they went in and did the fix up and repair and all the things that they had to do, um, they lost money on selling these houses. So they, you know, they're not buying houses like they used to. Open door still buying some, but Zillow completely quit buying houses altogether. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, eat it, pal. Thank you so much for the, that that follow. And eat it, pal, is an amazing, amazing. And I, I saw Bob said that he had um, refied three times, and that happened. Uh, you know, a lot of people did that, where mm -hmm. every time the rate would go down a percent, they would refi, and so they're saving thousands and thousands of dollars in interest by you know refrying. Re refrying, yeah, refrying. and uh, the problem with that is that's the reason we don't have a lot of inventory right now is because people that you know refi down to three two and a half two and three quarters wherever you may be why would they want to sell their house now and get their next house at six yeah six percent they wouldn't want to do that so right. people aren't selling their houses right now they, they're staying 
put where they're at, you know, unless they absolutely have to sell. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and then so when you refinance, you're actually, it, it, are you reassessing the actual worth of your house in the current market? Is that what you're doing? Correct. Okay. And then so if you're lowering the actual value of your house to pay a, a smaller payment, then people are going to try to pay that to buy it from you, right? Well, no, when, whenever you whenever you refi your house, you have to have it reappraised. Mm -hmm. And so the appraiser comes in, appraiser comes in and he appraises it at whatever the current market value is of the house. Now, most people will um, take a little bit of cash out on a refi. But if you're smart, you won't. You'll just ref you'll refi exactly how much you owed on your house. And so let's say you bought your house at 225, but you refied three years later and it's valued at 275. So you got fifty thousand dollars in equity built into the house right there. Mm -hmm. But let's say you only owe two hundred on it. So you refi two hundred at a lower interest rate, and then your payment goes down. And inevitably, the the long term price that you pay for the house comes down because you're paying less interest. You know, you, if you buy a house for two two fifty and finance two hundred thousand dollars, you may end up paying four hundred and some thousand dollars if you get a thirty year loan, right. because you're paying interest on that on that money. So you know, you have to th if you think long term, the lower your interest rate and the more that you can pay extra. You know, I always tell people get a, a, a mortgage that you can live with. And then whenever you have extra money, when you get bonuses or whatever, if you can pay an extra couple of hundred dollars a month, you know, you can knock that interest way down and pay your house off a whole lot quicker by mm. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily devalue the house. No, no, okay. not at all. Okay. That's, that's for whatever reason I thought that's what it was. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. Cause yeah. then you've got a, a fresh appraisal on the house saying what it's worth in today's market hmm. versus what you paid for it. Right. Right. Do you, uh, so right now prices are kind of leveling out and coming down, you'd say? Yeah. In some areas, uh, prices are coming down, especially the areas that saw the big, huge jumps hmm. in, in price they're coming down, but not nearly as much as they went up. Mm. So I'm seeing some houses that were, uh, let's say um, in 2021, they were priced around 450. Well, they went up to 700,000 over a three year period, two and a half, three year period. Now they might be back down to 650 now, mm. but they're not back down <laughs> to 450. Four, right. <laughs> so the people still have plus $200,000 equity from what they paid for the house. Mm. So, wow. and, you know, a lot of people say, well, why don't, why don't I sell the house and take, uh, take advantage of this equity? Well, that's fine if you want to rent, but if you want to buy another house, you're going to pay more for your house, you yeah. know? So, uh, whatever house you buy is going to be on that same plane as, you know, that's gone up in value as well. So yeah. it's not like you're going to be buy high or, or sell high and buy low. Mm. You're going to have to, sell high and buy high yeah. <laughs> and you're going to pay more for interest right now. So why not just stay in your house? So, you know, for first time home buyers, do you think that waiting a little bit would be the right move? Or do you think that, uh, that if you can afford it, get it now? If you can afford it, I would buy it now. Mm -hmm. If you can find a house that you want, I would buy it now because you can all, once again, marry the house and date the rate yeah, because you can refi later. You know, mm -hmm. if you can afford to get into it now, go ahead and do it. And then when the interest rates start coming back down, just refi and then your mortgage payment comes down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then so for, so if you are a first time homeowner and you're, uh, what, what would you say is the 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 first thing to do if you're trying to go out and buy something, uh, buy a home? Like, what what's the first step that you would take? Save up. Save you up. know, you're going to have that down payment. Save up, and then uh, make sure that your credit is is as good as you can get it. Mm -hmm. You know, repair your credit if you need to. Pay off things that will, you know, credit card debt and things like that. Pay off uh, the. The, there's a line of demarcation around a credit score of 720. Mm -hmm. If you're below 720, you're going to have um, a higher interest rate. If you're above 
720, you're going to get a better interest rate. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is about 800. If you hit 800, then you're going to have the best interest rate that you can get. And then the other one is about 640. Mm -hmm. If you hit 640, you're going to have a really high interest rate if you can even get a loan. You know, it's going to be tough, you know, to maybe even get a loan at that point. <laughs> What, what do you think about um, like buying um, properties that might be you know, like kind of run down and, and then sort of uh, investing in fixing it up? Absolutely. That's, you know, I always tell people if you have the wherewithal to do a fix up and repair where you can buy a property and rehab it, mm -hmm. um, you're going to come out ahead. Um, especially if you can do the work yourself. Yeah. Um, if you're having to pay somebody else to do the work, then it's kind of hard to to come out okay on it. But you know, still, if you if you let's say you buy a house that in fixed up value would be four fifty, but it needs a you know one hundred fifty thousand dollar work on it. Well, you got to buy it below three hundred to be able to even break even on, on, you know, where the, the, the real value is. So there's a lot of research that needs to go in and you need to have a really good realtor that knows about rehab properties mm -hmm. so that they can go in and say, okay, these are the things that need to be done to this property. These are the thing, th this is how much it's going to cost you to do this. And this is what this house is listed for. So either, yes, you can do this, or we're going to have to, you know, try to get them down on the price some to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My brother-in-law, he just, he just brought, bought a couple of properties here in town and <clears throat> he, he's actually living in San Diego right now, but he's going to be moving his entire family out here in the spring, which is really cool. My, my wife is from California, so uh, all her family's out there. So it'd be nice to have some family coming out, but he just bought two rehabs and him and his uh, older brother are actually doing the rehabilitation and, uh, you know, it, it's it, it's really cool to see that because I think he bought like a property in a decent neighborhood. It's not like the greatest neighborhood, but it's like, you know, it's a it's a city. It's an inner city neighborhood. And um, uh, it was like 12 grand or something. And they're just putting in all the they're doing all the labor and stuff. So, I mean, he's definitely he's definitely good with his money and he definitely knows how, um, you know, where to put it. So. You know, I, that kind of stuff is really cool to see. But the, yeah, I, I, I don't know anything about building. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about it. So it would be a, it would be. So what do you think it's easier to get a home loan or a, um, uh, a loan to fix up a house or whatever you co would call that? I don't know. Well, it's going to be a little bit harder to get a rehab loan. Mm. Um, just because you're going to, have to have more money down, mm. um, especially if you're not going to be living in the house. If you're, if you're, if it's an investment property, you're probably going to, have to put down at least twenty five percent. Wow, on an investment property. So where if if you're you know if you're buying a house to live in it, you can go get an FHA loan and have to and three and a half percent down. You know, mm. is all you have to put down. Right, right. And you can get an FHA loan with with three and a half percent down. So. So if you bought a property outright cash and then you went out to 12K Uncle Tom's Hut, yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, so so if you bought a property outright in cash and then you get a rehab loan, it, you, you still have to put down that 25% of what the loan's worth? Of what the, of what the value of the house is. Oh, oh, what the value of the house is. So if the house is worth a hundred thousand, you would have to put down twenty five thousand. But if it was worth, but if you paid like twelve thousand dollars for it, and you went and tried to get a rehab loan, then then you would be that would be pretty. You you would have to you would they would only loan you seventy five percent of the value of oh. post of post rehab. Oh wow! So if you so so they would come in and they would uh, look at your plans that you had. Um, drawn to whatever you're going to do for the house and all the things you're going to do and the cost involved in that, they would have an appraiser come in and look at that and say, okay, this house with all this stuff done to it, you you're paying 12, but it's going to be worth 150. Hmm. So they're going to, they're going to lend you 75% of the 150. Okay. okay. Or rehab. And then you still have to pay the 25% of that then. Uh, well, no, not on that. Because you're only paying twelve thousand for the house, so oh, you're okay. probably just gonna have to put down twelve thousand. Oh, okay. 
And then, then they will loan you 75% of the rehab value of the house, oh. whatever the value of the house would be once you rehab it. So, so that's not a bad way to go then, right? It would be, no. okay. All right. Well, that's very now, I can tell you the interest rates on those are going to be higher, mm. probably at least a point and a half higher. So if, if wow. interest rates are 6%, mm. a rehab loan is probably going to be about seven and a half percent. So you would want to refi after you got everything done. Mm. Um, you would want to make sure that there's no penalties for, you know, dropping that loan and re and getting a new loan within a, a certain amount of time. Wow. Yeah, no, no prepayment penalties, which there, there's not very many pre prepayment penalty loans out there now, but you just want to make sure that you don't have that prepayment penalty um, so that, you know, if you get a seven and a half percent loan for the rehab loan for the construction loan, basically is what mm -hmm. you're doing right. that you can refi that at the, you know, at the end of the project, you can refi it. If you're going to keep it as a rental property or a personal property or whatever, you mm -hmm. want to be able to refi it. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Is there still, are, are they still doing those variable loans? I don't know if that's what they call them, but the ones that got us into that, to the 2008 crisis. Very those, few. Very few. So very the, few. Of those. they're still out there. They're still out yeah, there. Yeah, they're still out there. But basically what they are is they're what we call a call loan. Hmm. Uh, so you, you will, let's say interest rates are 6% right now. You might get a call loan at four and three quarters or four and seven eighths or something, um, maybe even 5%, but that there will be a call on that loan. So it's usually like a three year call. So you will have to refi in three years. Mm. So it, um, th they're not the old type loans so much anymore where, or not in our area anyway, where you would buy it and, and in three years, the interest rate would go up or down depending on where the current interest rates were. Okay. That that's interesting that they they allowed those to still even continue. That that's yeah. it's kind of rude. Well, like I said they're not doing that much of that particular kind of loan anymore, mm -hmm. but they are doing the call loans where they'll it, it'll have a balloon payment in like three years, five years, seven years, whatever. You know, <sighs> there'll be a balloon payment at the end. The, now, who 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 are they giving those loans to? Who what type of you know like who, who gets those kind of loans? Well, it would be it would be a buyer who. Um, probably doesn't want to live in a house more than three, five, seven years, however, how many ever years that balloon, balloon is, mm -hmm. but also somebody who um, wants to lower their, their payment a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, on, on monthly payment side to be able to get into a house. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. It's very good for a transient type person who may work for a large company that they get transferred around a lot mm -hmm. where there'll be a call on that loan um, where they can, you know, they have to, either refi or sell the house. One of the two. Right. You know, right. To, right. You know, so, yeah. That, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I, so where you're at is the, and, and you're still in the Raleigh area. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And so where you're at is, is, uh, is business good. Is, is everything still going good? I know, I know we had a huge boom last summer and all, you know, all last year, but uh, I mean, is things still going good for you? Well, I tell you, from 2001 to 2000, uh, to about August of 2022, um, we were like cats covering up poop. I mean, it was just, we were working 24 seven. I mean, it was, it, it was crazy. I mean, it was just crazy. It's, you, you know, you would list a house and it would be 15 offers on it within a couple of hours after it going live. So, um, it was a, it was a crazy wow. time. Wow. Um, I would say we're back in a normal market now where it's more normalized, um, where, you know, the average days on the market has gone from hours to weeks now. I mean, we're up about, I think the last time I looked, we were, um, last month, the average days on the market were like 28 days to, to sell a house, but literally for about two years, it was hours. I mean, you would list a house and it would be multiple offers within hours of wow. that house. Wow. It was crazy. It was, it was just, it was insane. It, you know, it was like, and it was not sustainable. You know, you just couldn't sustain that for, for much longer than we did. Right. But man, that must've been a, that must've been a good time for your pocketbook. Well, it was, I mean, you know, you, it's, I always tell new agents when they get into the business to save up, you know, in the good times, you got to save up because mm -hmm. there's gonna be bad times, you know, <laughs> but you gotta just 
Don't don't um, don't go out and start buying Mercedes and BMWs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that happens all the time, though. I'm sure you get some over anxious uh, uh, or overzealous agents who are just like, oh, I made these big big sales, and now I'm gonna you know drive my Jaguar and buying two houses, Gucci suits and all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Gucci suits. How many <laughs> Gucci suits you got, Eddie? I got none. None? No. You see what I wear, man. This is what I wear. <laughs> is, is, that, is that is that your work attire as well? Hey, I don't dress up anymore. I'm, you know, I'm beyond that. You know, I, I, I mean, you know, I wear button-down collar shirts about to dress up I ever, as I ever get. I don't wear, I used to wear a suit, you know, sport jacket and tie when hmm. I first got in. Nobody does that anymore. Hmm. Yeah. That's you know, we, we meet in coffee shops now. We don't meet in the office anymore. You know, it's, it's just a whole lot more casual than it used to be. Hmm. And I think people enjoy it. And, you know, I think people are more believable when they're themselves, too. I mean, I never felt comfortable in a suit and tie. I just never did. Yeah. I did it because everybody else was doing it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm normally just, I have a shirt and khakis or, you know, whatever, jeans or whatever. But, um yeah, I don't I don't dress up much to go out anymore. It's just not worth it, you know. I feel you, man. I, I, I don't dress up at all really. I mean I'm in sweats like if I'm not at work, I'm 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 in sweats and a t shirt. I'm not doing anything. Like and I have to wear a, a chef's coat at work, so I, I don't that's about as dressed up as I get. I'm not <laughs> I'm not trying to do all that, of it. This is my favorite shirt. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a plaid lining in it. So it's like Oh yeah, yeah, I can't see. Like a plaid lining in it, so it's very comfortable. So. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's a so it's like a nice soft material on the inside. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is one of my favorite shirts. Well, thank you for wearing your favorite shirt on the show. I appreciate it. And my that. favorite hat too, you know, my camo. <laughs> Yeah, well, I appreciate that too, my friend. Uh, I actually started wearing sweatpants out of the house. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. In the summer, it's basketball shorts. In the winter, it's uh, it, it, it sweats. I'm not. I, I barely wear jeans. I just bought a new pair of jeans that and I haven't. I haven't bought a new pair of jeans in probably like two years, and I just did it. I, I made the. I, I made the plunge. I did the thing. I. I, I just felt it was time to get a, a decent pair of jeans, and I. I otherwise. I, I ain't. I'm not. I'm just not with it. Now I don't mind wearing a suit and tie and looking dapper now, because I. I clean up very well. But um, I, I just, I'm not interested, man. I'm, I like that idea of just sort of living your own lifestyle that you sort of built for yourself. And that's what's cool about what you're doing. It's like you worked your ass off to get to this point where you can be casual and, and, uh, and why not? That's, that's yeah. beautiful, man. That's a, that's a good place to be in life is to just be able to call your own shots and wear what you want and not feel like you have to you know, make any, you're not impressed. You're not like trying to impress people with your clothes. You're just, you're, I've got, I got two daughters getting married this year. So oh, I'll, wow. I'll be wearing a tux twice this year. So. <laughs> that's, and that's it. That's it. That, congr- Unless somebody dies and then I wear a suit to a funeral. You know, that's- <laughs> well, let's hope nothing like that happens. Yeah. Congr- well, let's hope not. Congratulations on your daughters getting married. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. Uh, one's getting married in June and the other one's getting married in September. Wow. Uh, how old, if you don't mind, how old are they? They're both in their 20s, mid wow. to late 20s. Wow, that's really cool, man. That's really cool. That, that that That's such a trip, the idea of... My son's nine years old, and so I I, I can imagine that feeling, but I, you know, you don't know unless you're there. How, how, how does it feel seeing, you know these little beans that you used to carry around all so delicately and, and feed and, and all that grow up to be to, about to get married. What, what is that? What is that like? Well, you know, I always, I always try to tell people when they don't have kids is that, you know, when kids are small, when you get them, they're, you know, they're lovable and huggable and you, you have to give them a hundred percent because they can't take care of themselves. Right. And then they turn three or four and they start getting independent and they start doing things for themselves and they start feeding themselves and they're able to go to the bathroom for themselves and all these things that you had to do for them every day. And it's sort of like a relief that, you know, you're not having to care for them every single minute. And then as you watch them grow, and I I always tell people that, you know, 
pay attention to your kids because this time goes by. I mean, 18 years goes by just like that. I mean, it goes by just like that. And, you know, there's a time in our girls' lives where, you know, I was, I was everything. I was Superman. I was, you know, I was like everything to them. And then they hit about 13 or so and they didn't like me so much. You know, they, <laughs> you know, they were starting to like boys and I was trying to protect them and they didn't like dad too much. <laughs> and then uh, it started changing a little bit around 18 or 19. But once they hit about 22 or 23, they're back to where they love dad again. Oh. So, you know, you, you go through that whole process, that long process of, of, of them, you know, being 100 percent dependent on you to where, you know, they're totally out there on their own now. And, you know, when our kids left for college, it was like, oh, God, you know, they're leaving for college. <laughs> and then when our second one left for college and we were empty nesters, it was like, oh, what are we going to do with all of our time now? Um, but now, you know, it's like, you know, we've, we're have we very close with both of our future son-in-laws. We're very close with them. And both of our daughters were very close to them. And, you know, we spend a lot of time together and we do a lot of fun things together. Um, so, you know, the wedding is going to be something very special, I think, you know, for both of them. So it's going to be fun. Wow. You get me all wet in the eyes, Eddie. You get me all wet in the eyes. It's, it's not a, it, it's a, it, man, it, it's just such an interesting thing, man. Like I, I never thought I would be a, a father, you know, I never thought that that would be part of my life. I was just a <clears throat> degenerate musician and. My wife was never a degenerate musician, but <laughs> she chose one. Um, but uh, we were both musicians, and we, we were living that selfish musician life, and, and we had a pleasant surprise. And you know, it, it took me, it was hard for me to get, wrap my head around it. How, how was it when, when you first, w were you trying to get pregnant, or w was it a, a surprise? Oh, 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 Eddie's getting wet in the eyes, too, guys. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Damn, I, you, man, this is what this is what fatherhood does to men. It really does. And, and nothing against it either. I'm not saying that like yeah. you got to be a man and never cry because that's bullshit. But it's like it, it's like you think you're one thing, right? And then you have a, a child and you're holding a baby, and, and that all just melts away. It's like all that preconceived notion of what manhood is. I mean, uh, to me, a real man is somebody who who's there for their children 100, percent like you're saying, and and yeah. and you know showing emotions and showing your children that it's okay to 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 feel and stuff because this idea that you know a man has to be stoic at all times and never show emotions and and just be that guy it's like oh man that's that's such a that that seems it took us a long it took us a long time to get pregnant the first time oh, i mean yeah. we we really had to try you know and it's like it just didn't happen didn't happen didn't happen and all of a sudden it happened yeah. Um, and so then, you know, then the second one, um, we didn't have to try for that long. You know, it just kind of happened. Nice. Um, I mean, I think we waited like two years or so, and then we had, had, uh, our second child, but, um, yeah, it was, um, and, and our, t our kids are two totally different individuals. You know, yeah. they're two totally different people. You would have thought that they came from two different sets of parents mm -hmm. because they're, they're, personalities are so different and and they both have very good personalities but they're just so different yeah you know they, they both um um like different things they both act differently um and, but they're you know they're both beautiful people but they just are so different you know, you know they're not you you wouldn't think they came from the same parents you know <laughs> it's so weird how that how that works um you would Cause like it's almost like right out of the right out of the womb they they have their personalities sort of like mapped out already you know what I mean like I it I don't know my son has been very consistent on who like like the cool thing about social media is is that you do get a chance to like capture all these moments of your life if is you know depending on how long you've been on it like me and my wife have been on Facebook since you know it's ridiculous um, but we've had Facebook since we've had our son and she just showed me this video of him, of him like maybe two or three and he could barely talk, but he, he's still obnoxious and silly and stuff. It, it's just like they come out swinging with their, with their personalities. And, and it's really interesting to see those personalities develop. Um, 
Uh, would you agree with that? I mean, was your daughters I, like that? They had their own thing yeah. coming out, and, though. Yeah, and you know, when you said that, it just made me remember something. You know, on your on your cell phone, iPhones, um, like every once in a while, it'll pop up and it'll say, three years ago today." Yeah. And it is, I love those things because it has like this whole thing that scrolls through of all these pictures of what happened during that year. And I love those things because it's like, you know, half of the pictures I forgot I even had on my phone, you know, and they're, they're scrolling through all this stuff. But yeah, social media is, has never been a big thing for me. Um, I've gotten into it more recently because of Twitch and also because of my daughters communicate a lot through, through, um, Instagram and what's that other one called? What's the other one called? That uh, Facebook? No, 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 no. TikTok, uh, Snapchat. 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 Oh, oh yeah, because they're in their twenties. They're they're snappers. Nicktronic, welcome in, my friend. Yeah, so so it's one of those things where um, you know I got more. I've gotten more into it and gotten more used to it. But um, I was never a big Facebook guy. You know, I just mm. never really got into it. it. Just for whatever reason, it's not you know. A lot of my friends were on it, but I just never get in, never got into that. Bro, Facebook is such a like I was scrolling on the other day, and I was just like, it made me not physically sick, but I just like that feeling of like ugh, revulsion. I'm just like, this is awful for me. I don't even want to be on it. And what's interesting too is that it, you might have noticed that a lot of people who are involved in Twitch aren't really big fans of Facebook either. So it it it, it does make sense. It's for old people now. I'm old now. So <laughs> it's how old are you? How old I, I'm turning forty in April. Okay. So I'm not young, but I'm not old. I, I got mean, 26 years on you, brother. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we all meet. The, if we're lucky, we all meet that fate, right? We all we yeah. all grow old, and and uh, if we're lucky, so it, yeah. AJ, the alternative. The alternative is not very good. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, yeah. Because we're dead. Uh, but no, it, it's it. You, I feel you though. I feel you with the the social media. I, I spend too much time on social media at this point. Um, I, I do tick. I do the tickety talk. Are, 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 are have you ever messed with the TikTok? I've never done any TikTok videos. I mean, I've watched some of the craziness on there. My <laughs> wife will show me one. She she watches TikTok videos all the time. So I, I you know I watched a couple of those, but I've never really gotten into TikTok. I've never done any personal videos right, on. Right. It. I know a lot of people who do. No, it's 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 basically it's funny. It's basically the it's basically a spy software for the Chinese. But you know, I, I love it. <laughs> it's a good time. It's good stuff. Balloons, balloons, and TikTok. Right? Oh my God! Listen, <laughs> I I think the best thing that our dementia ridden president has done in in a few years is is that he took those balloons down and like why. Apparently, apparently, uh, uh, he, they've been floating around for like three years. Is that right? Yeah, who knows? How did we miss this? It, it, it's like, yes, get those stupid ass balloons out of the sky, please. Like, this is this is ridiculous. Thank you, Joe Byron, for doing your job and, and getting those things done. Uh, oh, Brandon. Go Brandon. <laughs> go, go Brandon. Let's go Brandon. Oh my God. I yeah. I'm not. I'm not a fan of our current president. I wasn't a fan of our last president either. I don't. I don't want anybody to think you know anything. I, I'm. I'm such a fence sitter. I'm such a fence sitter. Like I. I just. I'm not. I'm just not satisfied with what our country or or at least our leaders. Because I love our country. I love this country. This country is amazing. But I feel our leaders are just so corrupt at this point. I don't know. It's it's they are, and I'm like you. I love the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I fought, you know. I, I, yeah, I, I went to, to battle for them, but I still think that you know my political statement, if I had one, is that they need to start all over again. They mm-hmm. need to fire everybody and start all over again because everybody has been up there so long. They're all getting corrupt. They all are on the take. Um, it's just, I, I just don't trust any of them up there anymore. Yeah. I don't care what side of the aisle you sit on. I don't yeah. trust any of them anymore. Absolutely. And and that's what's so disheartening about it all. It's like, it, 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 and, and like, you know, you can feel it in the country. It's disheartening for people that, that they don't even 
have any faith in their own country or at least their leaders because I, I absolutely have faith in our country as in the people in it. But unfortunately, I just feel like we're being... I feel like we're being intentionally divided so that these crooks can sort of run a gambit on on the tax uh, the taxpayers' money and and you know do these weird proxy wars and and make all these you know all these corporations more money than they've ever made. I just saw the other day that the that Chevron and Shell that last year they made more money than they have ever in the history of their country. And I mean, it's obvious we were all paying what you know five, six dollars a gallon. My friends in California were paying you know seven fifty, eight dollars a gallon, and it's like, yeah, they made the most money. <laughs> of course, they fucking made the most money. They were it's a racket, man. It's a racket. Yeah, it, and that's and and I think you you're onto something there. Where we just sort of need to start over with it and. You know, not necessarily burn the burn it all down, but like uh, just a reforming of it because it's just like they're they're career politicians. Like what, Mitch McConnell has been in the Senate, or or is he the Senate? Yeah, he's the Senate. Uh, what was it, 40, 50 years or something? And and Pelosi. Joe Biden's the same way. Joe Biden's been in it forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, they've and, all been out there forever. And, and they're all liars and they're all just taking money and and it's just it's just it's just so gross man it's just so, so gross to me mike i always tell people i say if you want to know or if you want to believe in the united states go back and look at some videos of after 9 11 and the patriotism mm. after that yeah yeah and and you know, that that shows you what our country really is all about. It's yeah. the people. It's not the politicians. Right. It's the people. It's yeah. the people. We got beautiful people here. Beautiful, hardworking. Uh, you know, very creative. I mean, when you think about like what the America uh, uh, America has given to the world, just art in itself, right? Just art. If you just go by art, you know, forget everything else. Which we've contributed a lot more than that, but like rock and roll and jazz and, 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 you know, like EDM, whatever, the whole thing, we've, we've contributed so much to this world, uh, in, in art. And, and it, it's a great example of what can happen when you let baseball. people baseball, baseball. Base, there you go. Baseball. I'm, exactly. <laughs> baseball. If, if you're into that, it's like, sports. Exactly. Like these different sports and stuff. We, we've we've contributed so much. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a shame that uh, that we're getting to this point where our leaders just have chosen to be greedy. And yeah, <laughs> look, Robbie, wh- who's your team? Hurricanes. The Hurricanes is is that uh, 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 Carolina Hurricanes hockey? That's hockey. I bet mm-hmm. I bet Robbie knows about. Them. I, I'm I'm sporting the Simpsons. The Simpsons. <laughs> Blue, Blue, Blue Carolina. That's Robbie always says Blue Carolina every time I mention them. You, you know what, Robbie? You calm down. It, Robbie does his thing. And if you guys don't know, Robbie does his own sports podcast, which y'all should go check out. If I was a sports guy, I would I would definitely. Um, be more interested in 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 hearing more about uh, sports. Not nothing against Robbie does a good job. He's actually the the his uh his uh co guest. No, wait, no co co host. God dang, his co hosts keep it interesting. So even if you're not into sports, like they keep it very interesting. So definitely go check out Robbie's uh podcast, everybody, and make sure you go check out his YouTube. He has some underwater stuff in there and stuff. Three. Do you hours. know that he makes? Do you know that he makes awesome emotes too? He does make awesome emotes. He, I, I he he was making the one emote that he has that's a dragon. He got he got busted by Twitch, but uh, I'm still rooting for you. Is that is that a Robbie original? That's a Robbie original there. Hey Robbie, let's go. I, Robbie, I keep forgetting that you make emotes. Um, we gotta we gotta collaborate and. Uh, because I don't know how to do the uh, animated ones, and um, I just see what your rates are. Because um, I would like to do some business with you, my friend. I keep forgetting you do that. Most kind of Robbie charges me more because I'm an asshole. 
I'm a perfectionist. He, sa- he says I'm too much of a p- perfectionist. He's like, you ask too much, bro. I'm going to have to charge you double. <laughs> I do like that, though. I like your, you throw your hands in the air like you just don't care. Uh, the other, here's the other one he made for me was the, let me see. Was the boot scoot dancing one. <laughs> Let's go. Boot scoot boogie, baby. Let's, so so um i you know i noticed you did a garth brooks cover um we played that um uh at the beginning uh, are, are you a fan of garth brooks i am I, I i he was probably one of my um best country influences mm. you know, coming up and um uh, you know and when i say country i mean uh the newer country right right you know, right the newer country and uh, I, I really enjoyed a lot of his music. Um, we played a lot of his music um, when, it, especially when I did um, when I did uh, just solo act. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for years, I did a lot of bars and restaurants and stuff. And you know, people always loved Garth Brooks when you played it. So oh, yeah. they, st- uh, they love so it. it. They still do, man. They still yeah. love. It. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, Garth, Garth Brooks is uh, he's probably hands down, like you said, if we're talking about newer country, Garth Brooks is probably my favorite. Like that, I mean, those first five albums, probably, I don't know. I fell off after In Pieces, I think, but I I just, they're just, from from start to, to end, they're just masterpieces in country music. It's just so good. I yeah, fucking love them, man. Oh, uh, you know it bones me out that he's he uh, in which uh, you can't blame the man because he wants to get paid, but like it bums me out you can't stream his music. Yeah, you and can't. You, you got to buy a hard copy of that, and and uh, th- that's really interesting that he's sort of stuck to those guns. Yeah, I, I actually um, I, I applaud him for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, he's, he stuck to his guns on that, and he would not let Apple or anybody else yeah. take a cut of his share. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to go with this, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And it, and it worked for him. So it, yeah, the man's not the man's not hurting in in the finances. That's for sure. <laughs> he is yeah. he is not a poor man because of that decision. Uh, if anything, he's you know maintaining, and, and like that's the thing. Like the only way to get it is to go out and get the hard copy. So, and he has legions of fans. And uh, honestly, I, I gotta see if he has any vinyl. I would totally buy vinyl. The Garth Brooks. I'm gonna look into that. I need some vinyl Garth Brooks, man. Cause, gosh darn, man, those those albums are just so good. I love it. His real fans will find him at wherever he is. Did you know that uh, there's a a, a, a a conspiracy that Garth Brooks is a murderer? I did not know that. I'm not, it's not. It is a joke, but it's not a joke. <laughs> like, here we go. So this is what's interesting about Garth Brooks is that uh, Internet seems to really believe that Garth Brooks is, could be a murderer. If you've ever taken a look at Garth Brooks' social media accounts, odds are... And by the way, have you ever followed Garth Brooks on social media? Like no. he is the most, he has been rich and famous for so long that I truly believe that he has really lost touch <laughs> with what common people are. Reality. Uh, yeah. I mean, and you know, like I, I separate the art from the artist, you know what I mean? Like he could, honestly, he could do no wrong to me. Like I would always go, I mean, it, it, he would have to really be a terrible murderer, but, but here's, here's this article and, and it, it's funny. It, it, it's, it's, it's based on a joke, but people really do. People will show up to his concerts with signs saying, "Where's the bodies, Garth?" and <laughs> and it, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. If you've ever taken a look at Garth Brooks' social media accounts, odds are you've noticed a particularly odd con- constant in his comment section. People ask him where the bodies are. Naturally, most of the country superstar uh, uh, naturally most know the country superstar for his hit track "Friends in Little pa- Places." But if this rumor has any footing, Garth may have some friends in even lower places than we all anticipated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so why is there a legitimate conspiracy surrounding if Garth is a murderer or not? How did the otherwise beloved musician get caught up in such a wild rumor? Keep reading for the known details. Uh, you won't believe how Garth Brooks' murder consp- conspiracy began. 
I know how it began because I'm a fan of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, it goes without saying that people comment odd things under celebrity social media posts all the time. However, the fact that hundreds, if not thousands of users have echoed the same sentiment under Garth's posts for years is a bit concerning. Do you do they know something that we don't? Well, maybe, but it's not what you think. Uh, the whole situation seems to have begun when Garth announced his 2018 stadium tour, which he did through a video that many mocked at the time uh the ymh studios your mom's house studios uh a popular comedy channel uh hosted by tom segura and christina p and fahim anwar posted a video where they implicitly alleged that garth is a murderer with hundreds of bodies hidden on his property although the video was purely com uh, comedic ymh studio fans ran with the claim and it is only snowballed from there and like it it the fact that the, the 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 fact that these comedians just sort of because of this joke that's turned into like real life consequences where people are really in the audience <laughs> where's the bodies got you know like it's just to me it's just the funniest thing in the world uh, this is the video that they were talking about which we gotta watch now let's go have some fun and let's get physical playing music i like that thought <laughs> oh. huh what the fuck let's is wrong physical. with you man who is randy Anyways, that wasn't much. Uh, uh, Garth's comments section is always filled with people asking him, where are the bodies? Uh, in, years, uh, in years since, you'd be hard-pressed to find one of Garth's posts that aren't filled with comments of users asking him where he's hiding dead bodies. The funniest part of the whole situation is that it doesn't seem as though Garth nor his team know what's going on yet. None of the comments have ever been deleted or archived over the years, and every time he shares something new, YM, YHM studio fans are quick to go off with murder rumors. <laughs> so does that mean Garth is a murderer? Far from it, but seems the rumors on the internet became so big that the truth gets hidden behind what was initially intended to be nothing more than a joke. So there you go. That, that, that... I poor mean... Garth. Poor Garth. <laughs> poor Garth. <laughs> I just think... <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so freaking funny that these folks like that that these comedians just started some ridiculous rumor and now there's just like Garth is 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 uh you know is beholden to that. It only it only takes a spark. It really does. And that's the you know, and that's the that that I guess that's the danger of the the internet, you know, like it, it's something it could be a joke and 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 a lot of the times these crazy rumors do start in you know reddit uh reddit threads and and 4chan you know the these uh memes will start in these these uh these these uh uh these threads and these websites and then it starts spreading it is like the whole QAnon thing like did you did you were you ever familiar with Gosh. QAnon thing correct yeah I that, do remember that. Were were you into the QAnon thing? No. That all started on like 8chan, right? Like this, and it, it, if you ever seen the documentary on it on HBO, mm -mm, it's I that, have not. Seen. It's super fascinating, man. It's just it's just like this weird website it's like reddit or like 4chan or it, they call it hn i think they call it something else now and it, they just were doing these q drops and it, it turns out it was the the dude who owned he was the son of the owner of the website who was actually doing the drops uh allegedly They're, they still haven't confirmed anything but he basically admits it at the end of the thing at the end of the documentary and it is just wild that it starts out as are these memes and then it sort of spreads and then and then people are invading the the Capitol building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I mean you, you seem like you don't spend a whole bunch of time on the internet. Is that true or or, or do you spend time on the internet just not on social media? Uh, just not on social media. I mean, if you consider Twitch's social media, I it spend is. a fair amount of time on, on right. Twitch. So. Right, right. Um, but other than that, um, not really. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's, it goes deep, man. I'll just sit there and just be reading. It's a rabbit hole. 
it's a fucking rabbit hole, it man. Is, I mean, you just go down deeper and deeper, you know. It, 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 and the fact that the, you have these people who are like dedicating their lives to this and, and, you know, really putting in like Donald Trump is our savior and all this wild stuff, you know, it was just such a, it, it's so wild. And so there is sort of this argument to where regulating what people are saying online is, may, might be a good idea. But then when you think about the idea of freedom of speech, and I'm ardent freedom of speech guy. Like as an artist, I think freedom of speech is how we've been able to produce like some of the best beautiful art, most beautiful art in the world here. You know, so like the idea that we were le uh, left alone and we're able to express ourselves how we want to. And we had to fight for that. I mean, there's times where, you know, people are getting arrested for, for saying what they're saying on stage or whatever. But the fact I, that... I, what? I, give me, can you give me two minutes? Sure, man. No. Okay. Oh, old men have to pee. No, I have to pee too. Maybe let's take a pee break. Let's take a pee okay. break. We're gonna both take a pee break. All right, guys, we'll be back and we'll probably end up ending up ending here shortly, but hold on. I gotta find my thing. He said old men gotta pee. And that ain't that truth. Ain't that America? Fresh. All right. Is anything gonna happen? We yep. Sweet. Speak English good. All right. Rapper and BRB. Abby Sarabia stops by to answer the tough questions like, what is the purpose of my existence? Tacos. What happens after death? Tacos. What is the nature of reality? Tacos. What is consciousness? Tacos. This week on We Speak English Good, Abby Sarabia. A goddess. You are the moon child born of the river Gaia. You are the portal between two planes of existence. I love you, Mother. Here is an offering of a pillow to serve the slumber that you desperately seek. Hey guys, today I'm going to be building an electro funk beat. Oh, hold on, let me do my hair. Let me do my hair. That vintage shit. Conglomeration right there. All right. Oh, Jesus. I went to the wrong freaking place. All right. Here we are. We're back. We're back. We we had to pee. You love those old videos? Well, thank you, Robbie. I appreciate you, my friend. Anyways, I, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> I lost track of what I was talking about. Do you remember? Hey, what I, had, I had to pee so bad. I forgot what we were talking about. So. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I couldn't even concentrate on what was going on. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. That's okay. We, 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 well, we've been going on here for a couple hours now, so we we could probably start ending this. Uh, oh, QAnon? Were we talking about QAnon? Oh, God. Yeah, we were. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, QAnon was silly. I, I actually had in the internet. Well, I actually have a guest that comes on here, um, and he's uh, he does pretty well on YouTube, and uh, he has totally made his career all about going against sort of this woke culture um and, and censorship and uh, which i'm not you know like i don't know this whole woke culture it there's there i feel like there's something to it but then again like like all these weird movements they they kind of go too far and then they start you know wanting to censor what people are saying and you know not that i want to yell the n-word in the streets or anything but i i definitely 
I, I think it's it's ridiculous to put parameters on people's expression, uh, especially in this country in any case. But um, I don't know. Like, he's completely leaned into that, and he's full-on Trump guy, and he's just... Uh, he's wild. Uh, his name is Nick Natoli. I, I, I love him. He's actually great, but he's like, he, he was huge into the QAnon thing. He was, he's huge into just like, I don't know. Where, where are you at with this woke culture? Is it, is it, is it, do you, do you feel like it's progress? I mean, cause people look at it as progress. Certain people look at it as progress. How do you, how do you feel about it? Me? Yeah. How do I feel about wokeness? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I could literally, can we talk for another three hours on this subject? Because I could really go deep into this. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a bunch of foolishness. Mm. Uh, I think they are, uh, are trying to um, do things that should not be even an issue sometimes. I mean, you know, they're trying to make issues out of things that aren't really even issues, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, this country was founded on free speech. It was founded on a lot of things. And they're trying to take away a lot of those freedoms where, you know, everybody gets offended about everything nowadays. I don't care what you say. You're going to offend somebody. If I if I say, oh, the sky is beautifully blue today, I will piss somebody off along the well, way. Well, you're so, you're an ableist because the blind people can't see you. Damn bigot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's uh i don't know it's 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 a crazy time that we live in and um you know we're all going we're all going to work through this and we're all it's all going to get better one day um yeah. it always does yeah i think yeah. you're right i think we'll get through it like you know the pendulum is swinging and obviously it's swinging one side right now very heavily um and you know like i, I just saw this uh, I saw a video of Bill Maher talking about um, how I always piss somebody off when I am typing. Yeah. Is that is, is that your music? Yeah, I wanted to see if you could post that. That's my uh, new release that just came out this oh, week. Oh, I didn't know you had a new release, Eddie. Why are we it's talking? My, it's my first release to digital platform. Oh, so. shit. Eddie, Eddie had no idea. Everybody, go check out Eddie. We're gonna, is it cool if we play that in a little bit? Yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah. That is this the road too, or this is the road original? No, the, the road is the, the the reason it has a two behind it mm. is because they screwed up my first one that I sent in. <laughs> okay, so this is the and second. They said, you got to redo this, so it ended up being road too. So. Um, I want I want to play this video. I think it sums it up really well because there's people making parallels of like this woke movement to like just you know the communist movement or like Mao's China and and. Let me see if I can. Bill Maher, um, woke Mao China. Let me see if I can f pick this up. I think this is yeah, and it just came out. So we'll just watch this oh, real quick, if you're part and then we'll 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 go and uh, check out uh, your new song. Because I'm I'm sorry I didn't know you had a new song. Huh? I feel like such a I feel like a failure as a as a host. Uh, okay, let's check this out. I think it sums it up. We probably won't watch all seven minutes of it, but. And finally, new rule: if you're part of today's woke revolution, you need. To oh, study you can't the hear this. Hold on, let me share this with you. Boop. There we go. Eddie and Bill. Bill and Eddie, here we go. Part of revolutions where they spin out of control because the revolutionaries get so drunk on their own purifying elixir. They imagine they can reinvent the very nature of human beings. <clears throat> communists, communists thought selfishness, selfishness could be cast out of human nature. Russian revolutionaries spoke of the new Soviet man who wasn't motivated by self-interest, but instead wanted to be part of a collective. No, it turns out he wanted to be on a yacht in a Gucci tracksuit holding a vodka and a prostitute. <laughs> not standing in line all day for a potato. <laughs> the problem with communism and with some very recent ideologies here at home is that they think you can change reality by screaming at it. 
that you can bend human nature by holding your breath, but that's the difference between reality and your mommy. <laughs> Lincoln once said that you can repeal all past history, but you still cannot repeal human nature. But he's canceled now, so fuck him. <laughs> Yesterday, I asked ChatGPT, are there any similarities between today's woke revolution and Chairman Mao's cultural revolution of the 1960s? And it wrote back, how long do you have? (laughs) That was Eddie's response. (laughs) Because, again, in China, we saw how a revolutionary thought he could do a page one rewrite of humans. Mao ordered his citizens to throw off the four olds old thinking, old culture, old customs, and old habits. So, um, your whole life went in the garbage overnight. No biggie. And those who resisted were attacked by an army of purifiers called the Red Guard who went around the country putting dunce caps on people. Yeah. Who didn't take to being a new kind of mortal being. A lot of pointing and shaming went on. Oh, and about a million dead. And the only way to survive was to plead insanity for the crime of being insufficiently radical, then apologize and thank the state for the chance to see what a piece of shit you are. And of course, submit to re-education, or as we call it here in America, freshman orientation. Listen to this story. There's a law professor at the University of Illinois, Chicago, named... Anyways, that, 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 you know, that, that's about the gist of it. And th- that's kind of where I see it. It's kind of where it feels like it's going. And when you have, you know... Rush. You have people shouting down speakers at colleges, you know, like it, these colleges have taken down the American flag because it's offensive to people. Like it's literally racing. It's literally falling right into those like four tenets that Mao was saying. It's like get rid of the old, get rid of the old culture, you know, get rid of all this stuff. And and I, I know I just sound like an old fart, right? Like to some, you know, 19, 25 year old, whatever. I, I must sound like such a, a, a bigot, but like, I do see it going awry. Like, I don't know. Like, would you agree with that? Uh, where do you stand? I don't... Well, here's what I think <clears throat> is I think you have to learn from history. Right. And if you erase history, how can you learn from it? Right. Or if you rewrite history, how do you learn from the mistakes of our past history? And yeah, have we made some mistakes? A lot of them. We've made a lot of mistakes along the way. But hopefully from those mistakes, we can come out a better country, a, be- a better group of people. Um, you know, if, you got to learn from your mistakes. And once again, if, if we hide that from a whole generation, how are they going to know that, hey, that was the wrong thing to do? That, that was not the right thing to do. And that's my big, big problem with a lot of this um, cancel culture is that they're canceling stuff that some people probably need to know about that was it right no it wasn't right was it some of it wrong some of it was very wrong mm. but i think it's also a learning experience for people that they need to to know about as well yeah yeah absolutely i i agree 100 percent, man it's it's sad when you see like general grant's statue getting defaced and tumbled over it's like grant led the union man like the the, the free Thank you for canceling us, Moving Dutchman. I appreciate you, my friend. <laughs> We've been canceled, y'all. We've been canceled. Here, I, I got you. We'll, we'll, let, let's just solidify it. There we go. Um. All right. So, I, I want to get to this song. And uh, so, is this is your a, a new song for you, or is this an older song you're re-releasing? How, what? Tell so, us about it's it. A, yeah, this is an older song. Mm that uh, was written back in early 2000. And uh, I just uh, just got the, the, the mindset and the technology where I can get it released now. Mm. Uh, so I'm releasing uh, three of my songs over the, uh, over the next month. The next one will be March the 1st, and the next one will be April the 1st. Um, so this one was released on my birthday, February the 2nd. Happy birthday. And, uh, thank you. And, and this is a song about um, uh, 
troubled times in your life and when you have to um, choose, you know, which path you're going to take and um, kind of coming back to center in your life and uh, back to the things that really matter to you. Uh, so that's kind of what this uh, this song was all about. Well, that that sounds wonderful. Let's uh, let's listen to the road. Where did I drop it? I just had it. Oh, I can just do this. Again. I'll just duh. Boom. Hey, all right. So we're gonna listen to the road from Eddie Brown Music. Everybody, enjoy this. Said she knew my face, but somehow she couldn't. Oh wait, this isn't the whole song. Do you, uh, so is there was there a it's, place? It's on my YouTube channel. Oh okay. Oh, we'll play it off your YouTube since we can hear get the whole song. Oh geez, Louise. Come on, sorry everybody. False starts here. We got some false verses. Did I put it in this one? Hold on. I don't know if I could. No, that's not there. Let me go to your YouTube channel. Sorry, guys. Yes, um, if you get the YouTube link is here, but I'll also send you exclamation point. Eb will bring up his YouTube channel and his Twitch channel, so make sure everybody's going and following Eddie. Uh, let me. See. There it is. And then I'll share the actual link to the video itself or to the song itself here in chat as well. So you guys can. And if you're listening on the audio side, make sure you guys are in the show notes and clicking around and, and go support Eddie and his new song, which uh, comes out, you said March 1st? No, this one was released on February 2nd. It just, oh, I don't think it's hit, you know, all the. All the places, okay. All the places yet, so. Okay, so here's the actual video, uh, the link to the video itself. So let's listen to The Road, which is out in most places. By the time you hear this, it'll probably be out everywhere. So go and stream this, everybody, and, 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 and go support Eddie. All right, The Road. Gosh. Road to nowhere 
He's lying on the floor yeah. Wife asleep on the couch My kisses wake her And we begin Instant classic. How comes I can't unmute you now, Eddie? Hold on, let's go back. Uh, Eddie, unmute yourself. I, I muted you so we didn't... But I, I, I can't unmute you now. Why can't I unmute you? I got it. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, that was great, man. That was really good. Now, are you doing the, all the guitar work on that? Like, what, what are you doing on that besides singing? Um, I played... a the acoustic guitar on it. Um, but we had someone else lay down the lead tracks and the organ and the drums. And yeah, that, that sounds good, man. I did, all, I did all the vocals. I did both the harmonies, um, and, and the vocals on it. So mighty, mighty. Thank you for those 500 biddies for playing Eddie's song. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that, that, uh, do you want to go back in and, and write new music and, and do a full band thing like this again? I, I would like to, um, in fact, I'm working on another one right now that oh, um, we're doing um, with, with Josh Norwood. I don't know if you, Northwood, I don't know if you know him or not, but mm. uh, he's done some stuff with Carly Sings. Oh, okay. And, uh, he, um, he and I are working on one right now that um, see if I can, um, get it done long distance, but I'm, I'm a old school guy. I would rather do it, you know, with a band behind me Yeah, um, to, to be able to kind of change things on the fly as we go. Mm. But, uh, yeah. That was fun. That, that was actually done in Nashville at blacksmith uh, studios. Okay. Black, blacksmith, uh, blacksmith record studios. And, um, so I actually got the, uh, the, the joy of doing that in, uh, in a real live, Nashville studio that was uh, it was awesome I mean we they had some fantastic musicians there you know behind me and stuff so it was it was a lot of fun yeah now was that a band that you hired or was it a group of guys that you knew that you all traveled to Nashville how did that work no, no, no. this they actually brought people in this was people that they brought in uh, the record studio brought them in and oh, wow. um, did it so oh yeah it was it was it a live take or were you doing single tracks? They did single tracks. Yeah. They, also I mean, they, they played it. Um, they, they played all the single tracks and then they put them all together and, uh, we listened to them and then we did some tweaks on that. And then I, I came back the next day and laid the vocals, uh, behind, you know, on top of all that. That, that's, <laughs> That's awesome, man. That that's really cool. I I I love those experiences, man. The studio, and you know, the studio. I, I'm I prefer recording by myself, but you know, going into the studio always feels fun, right? It's like you're always surrounded by instruments, and and there's just yeah. vibes going on, and yeah, man. The the studio. There's nothing like that. What were you uh were you able to get those takes down rather quickly papa cito how dare you raid us right now we're <laughs> papa cito welcome in welcome in 
uh, why don't we do a different song for Papacito? And then we're actually about to end. So we're going to do a raid song. So Eddie, so you know, <laughs> we won't we won't keep you much longer. I know we we're going pretty long here, but uh, we're going to do another song for you. We got a raid song going on. So welcome in our friends, Ziggy and Carrillo, Papacito. You guys know the drill. My name is Mike. This is WSEG TV, and we do music interviews, and also we do music news. Today's guest has happens to be Eddie Brown Music, who actually has a new song out right now, which you all should be going and checking out, which I'm going to drop the link in here. Make sure that you guys go check out Eddie's new song. We just played it, so we're going to do the raid song, and then we'll find someone else to raid, and, uh, and we'll, we'll, let, uh, we'll let Eddie go so he can go eat and pee again or whatever, because <laughs> that's what really- right. That's what happens. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a raid song, though, before uh, before we get out of here. Uh, and this is for you, Papacito. You know I love you, baby boy. Uh, let's go. Uh, I think I got this right. Gosh. I drink my white claw while I buy my Bitcoin with my body books. I can't eat the end while I rub one out to Joe Rogan's podcast. Yes. MMA. It's gonna be a hot boy summer. It's gonna be hot boy summer. It's gonna be hot boy summer. It's gonna be hot boy summer. Pills while I drink my muscle milk and I smoke my douche food. Fuck! Damn it! I hit on a girl that told me to put my shirt back on. Flex on a track. It's gonna be hot, boy summer. Welcome, Raiders! Thank you so much for raiding over Papacito. Boy summer. I'm gonna finish the song. <laughs> Boy summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dear baby Jesus, I need a lifted truck. Dear baby Jesus, can I get a lifted truck? Dear baby Jesus, can you lift my truck up higher? Higher! It's gonna be hot, boy summer. It's gonna be hot, boy summer. <laughs> it's gonna be hot, boy summer. It's gonna be hot, boy summer. Thank you, Raiders, for raiding over. I appreciate y'all being here. Any Brown music. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. I- I've been asking this question lately, and I've been liking it. What is the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? I, I can tell you I got it from my and it was very in my teenage years, but very early in my teenage years. And he told me, he said, Eddie, if you want to see your future, look at the people you're hanging around with. Mm. And that kind of stuck with me is that, you know, when you hang around with ne'er-do-wells, you're going to become a ne'er-do-well, you know, <laughs> so, um, that yeah. kind of stuck with me. Yeah. Um, my yeah. father had all sorts of sayings that he always come up with, but that was kind of one that, that stuck with me. And I actually told that to my daughters um, as well. So I think it's, uh, it's very good for especially young kids to, to know that, you know, if you hang around with the wrong people, you're probably going to end up in some very wrong places. I think that's great advice, man. That is so freaking true. That is so true. You 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 are who you hang out with. 
um eddie brown thank you so much everybody make sure you guys are going and checking out eddie's music make sure you're going and checking out his uh twitch streams make sure you're staying up to date with what eddie's doing and uh eddie thank you again for coming on the show i truly had a great conversation and mighty mighty thank you for all the gift subs i appreciate you all right everybody uh have a great rest of your evening eddie and everybody put your hands together for the one the only Eddie Brown music. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thank you. Guys. you. A lot of fun. I'll talk to you later, my friend. Be, be well. There he is. There he goes. The man, the myth, the legend. Downtown Eddie Brown, everybody. There he is. There he is. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Mighty Mighty, thank you so much for those gifted subs. I really appreciate you. Uh, let me, I, I, turning on my uh, my things here. So let's give Mighty Mighty the proper love. Hello, Mighty Mighty. This is Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I want to give you a huge thank you, a big old splits, and the <laughs> as a thank you for all that you do for this channel. Thank you, Jean-Claude, and thank you, Mighty Mighty. I really appreciate those gifted subs to Scarecrow Jenkins and Nick Tronic. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, I, I thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And uh, Eddie, we had a great time. You guys were awesome. Uh, uh, awesome chat. Uh, entertaining show today. Thanks for the love and laughs. Hey, Bob, no worries, man. And Bob, we... I think we shouted you out, but am I following you, Bob? I think I am following you. I am following you, Bob. Let me make sure. Let's see what Bob's doing. Let's go over Bob before we go. Let's check out some Bob. Everybody get some Bob in your life. And I don't mean Bob Marley, but Bob Marley too. Why not? Is it getting better? There we go. Oh, no worries, Bob. Do you feel the same? We're gonna play Bob while we uh, figure out who we're gonna raid here. Will it make it easy? Let me see who's on now. right now. Oh, we got Miss Vega. To blame. You say what what love? Love? Is what it Bob Marley's I birthday? Well, happy birthday, Bob Marley! In the night. Happy freaking birthday, Bob what freaking Marley. Love, love Bob Marley. All right, so let's go over to Liz Vega. I love Liz. I love Jizz. If you guys don't know who Jizz is, it's Jay and uh, Liz. Hold on, let's bring Bob back into the fold here. Bob's about to slay some guitar for us, so let's get it. Slay, Bob, slay. All right, uh, let's try to get this thing going here, if I can. Raid. Act like you never Liz Vega. You want me to go All right, guys, get your raid calls. We will be really back on Friday tonight. with uh, Adrian Dunn, who is a fantastic, uh, 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 fantastic composer, and he's in the theater group, uh, black theater scene in Los Angeles. So we will be back. On Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will see you guys then. Everybody, make sure you're getting your raid calls. I love you guys. I, and you never know, I might pop up this week for a surprise stream. Just just saying. Just saying. It's a big possibility. We might be doing some music news this week on Wednesday. So just, just keep your eyes open and your ears and your heart open too. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Much love. Let's go. Bob's going to play us out. <laughs>